Hey guys, if you are here. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the basics on how to create a professional generic server. With over four years of making and developing servers, I have quite the experience on how to make a proper server. You don't need to have a paid plan to make a professional server. However, it does help. This tutorial is not about how to code or script, nor is it a tutorial focused on how to be super successful when owning a server, but more on how to run your server and manage the core files of it properly. I see many server owners on Minehut who don't know how to run a server or maintain it properly. So I made this video to help you or the server owner out. Before I talk to you about the development side of things, I'm going to give you some tips and advice on how to run your server professionally. First of all, you're going to want to make sure that you are ready to pump out updates after releasing your server, otherwise your server will die. You're also going to want to develop on an external server and then upload or update your files once finished, unless it's necessary of course. I'm saying this because right now, Minehut is super slow and will take ages to reload and update your files. Don't hire lots of staff, try and have one tenth of the people online as staff at once. I'm too lazy to give an explanation to why not to hire lots of staff and also want to save your time. Okay. Now to the development side of things. First of all, you're going to want to pick a good quality name. This is super important. As, yeah, you can see why. To create a server name, I go to a random word generator, put it on verbs or nouns, and then add gen on the end of whatever word I get. I'm only joking, please don't do that. Try pick a unique and interesting name that relates with the theme of your server, as this will help to attract players. Now we need to install the basic plugins for your server, such as script, add-ons if needed, world guard, and world edit. That's it, you don't really need anything else, however if you have more plugin slots, you can install via version, via rewind, and via backwards. As some people will be on 1.8 or 1.12, the rest of the plugins is up to you. Now we need to make or paste a spawn. If you're too lazy like me to hire and can't find builders, or just can't build, then that's okay. You can use schematics. If you want to upload a schematic which currently only supports 1.12, simply locate your file manager, plugins, world edit, schematics, and locate the file on your PC. Go back in game and type slash slash schem list to see if it worked, then slash slash schem load, and then the schematic file name. Then use slash slash paste to paste it in, Try to paste the spawn around 0, 0 as this makes it look more clean. Now that you have your spawn set up and all your builds set up, we need to pick the colour themes for your server. These colours could be random or based on the words used in your server name. Only use 2-3 to three colours and if you really have to, 4, otherwise the server will look like a mess. Now we're moving on to the basic commands and features that most generic servers have. I've made a github download file. This file contains scripts for the basics, I have not colour coded the scripts though, as I am going to leave you guys to do that. Now if your server is lagging or starting to lag, I recommend watching this video. Having a laggy server makes most players leave as it results in a bad experience. It's also very important that you configure these plugins and files to optimise them just for your server's needs. You just need to put a bit of effort in and do some research. Moving on to the settings tab, I am only going to explain the highlighted ones as these are the most important due to the rest being self explanatory or unnecessary to modify. The first box is the level type, this is just like when you are picking your terrain generation in single player. You can even implement the latest terrain generation features. Pick whatever one you want, delete your world file, then restart your server. On to disabling the never and the end. Disable this if you don't want players going to the nether. And if you want to disable the end, go into bucket.yml and turn true to false. Also, make sure to delete the nether world and the end world file as well, just like how you deleted the world file. The third and final one is the spawn protection. You are going to want to turn this to zero. Spawn protection can prevent non-opt players from breaking blocks or doing certain things inside spawn chunks. Now we want to change a few things in paper.yml, which will improve the quality of life on your server. You can enable or disable player collisions if this bugs you, enable or disable anti-x-ray, 
and change your no tick view distance. The no tick view distance basically makes it so even when a player is out of the chunks they can still see around them. However if the chunk were to update they would not notice it. All of these don't affect your server performance. The last thing you want to do which is optional is to set up Bycraft and a discord server. I have left links to tutorials on how to set up a discord server and Bycraft as telling you would make the video too long. Maybe in the future. Oh, that's one heck of a video. If you've made it this far, please subscribe as it motivates me to make more videos like this. Remember this tutorial is super generic as I don't have time to dive deep into every type of server's needs. Hopefully I will dive into certain types of generic servers in the future like mine PvP, gem PvP, etc. and show you how to make those. 